Hello. Good morning. How's everyone doing? Oh my goodness. Let's try again. Good morning. How's everyone doing? Oh, welcome. What a great Wednesday. Uh, my name is Nancy Capasso Lee. I am our senior program manager and I oversee um, different components and logistics and operations of our Summer Institute. I am so excited that you're here joining us today. And those that are watching us through our live stream, welcome. Um, join, you know, a couple of housekeeping things before I introduce our director. Um, if you have not checked in in person, um, there are QR codes in various points of this room. Feel free to do so. Um, that's for the students. For those live stream watching, um, please go to the live chat in at the top of the page to check in as well. Attendance is important for us and for you. Uh, if you're here today and you haven't um, done your parking pass to make sure you don't get a ticket, please have your child show you that email so while we're speaking you can just go ahead and register your car um, just for today's event and you won't incur any issues with parking. Now it is my pleasure to introduce our director. Please give her a round of applause, Dr. Michelle Shostak. Hello and good morning everyone. It is such a pleasure to welcome you to our Summer Institute orientation today after three years ago having our last residential Summer Institute to be back on campus is just such a thrill. So we are going to get started. I'm going to be presenting a lot of information. You are absolutely welcome. If you'd like, pull out your cell phones. You're welcome to take pictures. And then after the presentation is over, there's also a site that we have within Rutgers, and we'll post the presentation as well. So if there's anything you missed, you can always check back and get that information. So we will get started. So first and foremost, congratulations and welcome on your admission to Rutgers University through the School of Arts and Sciences EOF program. It's an extremely competitive admission process for Rutgers University and later in my presentation I'm going to share some of those statistics. So please give yourselves a round of applause for your hard work as high school scholars to be admitted to Rutgers. So this year, we had over 1,100 students apply to our programs within the EOF program. Rutgers as a whole received almost 80,000 applications this year. But for EOF in particular, over 1,100. Of the 1,100 applications we received, only a little bit more than 500 students were admitted, so less than half. And these are all excellent high school students. So again, you are among a very elite group, and we have really high expectations for you as SAS EOF scholars. While we call ourselves the School of Arts and Sciences EOF program because structurally within Rutgers University we report to the School of Arts and Sciences, we also have EOF scholars from other schools within Rutgers. For the Summer Institute, we're dealing with our first year schools, which are the School of Arts and Sciences, Rutgers Business School, where are our business scholars? Any in the room? Congratulations. And also the Mason Gross School of the Arts. Anyone from Mason Gross here today? Maybe on the, on the live stream. So those are the first year institutions. We also serve upper division, in, upper division schools within Rutgers. So if you're interested in pursuing a major that's offered by the School of Management and Labor Relations or the Blaustein School of Planning and Public Policy, you would still be an SAS EOF scholar even if you went to one of those schools. At this point in time, we're really in the one month space before Summer Institute begins and we need to get you registered for classes. In order to do that, you need to have taken your Rutgers placement test. I don't want to put anyone on the spot, but if you have not 
taking your placement test, you need to do that right away. It should have been done weeks ago. Our deadline was June 1st because I have to get that information to the registrar's office next week. That is my deadline so they can get you registered for the start of Summer Institute. For the math placement test, there's an opportunity for a second take of the placement test, but there's a few day wait in between. So if you've taken part one of the math and you're thinking about taking a second part to see if you could adjust your placement, that needs to be done right away. If I don't have placement scores by, we're at Wednesday, by Monday at the latest, then it, we need to have a conversation because we're not going to be able to get you ready to attend Summer Institute. So again, if you haven't done it, go home. You could go on to the enrollment pathway. These are tests you take online, but they need to get taken. One of the things that you'll learn more about in your counselor group is the Canvas site. And this pertains to your fall registration. For most incoming Rutgers students, you're going to receive information about new student orientation, and that's the time that the majority of new students will register for fall classes. As EOF scholars, you will be able to register during our Summer Institute, so while you're welcome to attend new student orientation, the, what we cover in Summer Institute will be everything that you need to know as an incoming Rutgers student. Of course, you're welcome to attend, but if you do, you must attend one of the ones in August because we don't want it interfering with Summer Institute. There's lots of forms that we have online. If you're not familiar with our website, it's saseof rutgers.edu and you'll see a tab for incoming first year students so you want to make sure you fill out those forms so we have everything that you need to begin the summer institute when mrs lee speaks in a little while she's going to talk about what has to happen this summer in order to move into the residence halls at rutgers and to be able to enroll you in classes you want to upload your RUID card picture. You'll be receiving your Rutgers identification cards when you move in on Sunday, July 10th. For the Summer Institute, you want to have a working laptop computer. Although our courses will be in person this summer, in class, you'll have the opportunity to do writing. There might be times that you'll do something virtually. Our tutoring, which takes place in the evening, will happen virtually. So that's where you need the working webcam. If you don't have a laptop with a working webcam and Chromebooks won't work well within the Rutgers system, have a conversation with your counselor. We want to work with you. We want to make sure that all of the students have the technology that you need when you start Summer Institute. The dates for the Summer Institute. This summer, we're starting right after the 4th of July, so on Tuesday, July 5th, finishing up on Friday, July 29th. As I said, successful completion of the Summer Institute is a condition of your admission as an incoming EOF scholar. We do not want you to make any other commitments during this time. So if you have vacation plans, family reunions, we ask that you, you think about that. Weekends are okay because you'll be able to leave campus Friday after your last class or commitment, and then you'll return to the residence hall, and Mrs. Lee will talk about the timing, but sometimes Sunday evening. So if you have an event that's happening on a Saturday, Sunday afternoon, no problem at all. But for during the week, we need you to be here. Summer classes. The great news about coming to Summer Institute is you will have an opportunity to earn degree credits this summer. And as I shared, that the classes you're in are based on your Rutgers placement tests. So even if you come in and you tell me, I have AP credits for writing or I took the calculus AP exam, it's okay. Our instructors are able to teach at any level. And these courses are designed to help you be successful in your fall courses. You will earn one credit, one degree credit for each course. So if you're successful this summer, you will be coming into Rutgers University in the fall with three credits toward your degree, which is a step ahead of, you know, over 90% of the students entering Rutgers. 
As I had shared, please don't schedule anything else during the Summer Institute. Missing one day of classes during the Summer Institute is like missing three days of classes during the academic year. And you are all scholars, and we want you to excel in the summer. If you have any special learning needs, certainly for our scholars to have a conversation with your EOF counselor so we could start to put in place the resources that will help you to be successful at Rutgers University. What we often find are students who went through high school and by, you know, kind of sheer pushing through, for lack of a better word, they were able to, to get by without accommodations, but accommodations are in place so you could have what you need, as I shared, to be successful at Rutgers. So if you need extra time on an exam or you need your coursework presented in a different modality, the Office of Disability Services could work to make that happen for you, and ideally, to put this in place before you begin Rutgers in the fall. Your EOF counselor. At Rutgers University, there are only two groups of students that have a dedicated counselor. One are our student athletes, and the second group are our EOF scholars. Use your counselors well. They are a fabulous group. We are so fortunate within the SAS EOF program to have a team of a dozen counselors. We're the largest EOF program, not only at Rutgers, but in the state of New Jersey. And I often say to colleagues, probably in the entire country, of Opportunity programs serving over 1,200 EOF scholars. So your counselor should always be your first point of contact. Even if something comes up where you think, I really, maybe my counselor is not the right person because my issue has to do with financial aid or my issue has to do with parking or my issue has to do with something, something totally different, go to your counselor first. At Rutgers University, we always say all roads for EOF scholars lead back to EOF. Not a day goes by that I don't hear from a professor, a colleague, who says, is this one of your students? Is this an EOF scholar? And I'll say, yes, and we'll loop in that student's counselor. So always reach out to your counselor. Our counseling team is wonderful. They monitor their emails. They, they will get back to you quicker than you would hear from most other offices. And also, we have contacts in other offices. So if you need to get in touch with another office, it's always great to do it through the guidance of your EOF counselor. So this ends my presentation. We're going to go through a lot of information today. But Mrs. Lee has a microphone. And if anyone has a question now, for me, about the academic part of Summer Institute or other general questions, you are more than welcome to ask. Yes, sir. We're going to get you on the mic because we want it picked up on the live stream. Oh, <laughs> me too. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Thank you very much. Um, actually, it's a pretty simple question. He doesn't know who his EOF counselor is to contact, so how does he find out? And also, to part, um, a lot of the forms and stuff that you're saying to, to fill out and to go online, he just keep getting sent back or don't go through when he fills them out multiple times. So what do we do in that process? Excellent questions. So first question is about the counselor. I believe there are some members of our team that could check for you. If your son recently said yes to Rutgers, it might have just been a, a timing issue. No. Nope. Okay, so we, we will definitely check on that for you because we receive our information from the Office of Undergraduate Admissions. Once they let us know a student is eligible, then the next step is to assign to a counselor. So we'll figure it out. With respect to the paperwork, the great thing is our team is here today. 
So we have copies of the forms if there was, if you need anything notarized, we're really fortunate. We have three notaries on our team. They're all here today and they could notarize anything you need to. Mrs. Lee will talk about that in a little while. Some of our minor forms require a notarized signature. We could, we could handle all of that from here. So thank, thank you for raising that issue. If any of you ever encounter any challenges with our website, again, email your counselor. Mrs. Lee is our, you know, web liaison, so she could check if it's something that we could fix, we will. If it's something that we have to push up to our IT team, we'll do that. But we want to make sure that all of our forms go through smoothly and they're uploaded. Okay. Other questions? No other questions? Terrific. Our next presenter this afternoon comes to us, or this morning, from the Office of Financial Aid. She's the assistant manager there, a wonderful, wonderful friend to the EOF program, incredibly helpful and knowledgeable. Please join me in welcoming Ms. Ebony Camacho. Good morning, good morning. How are you all? Jeanette, you can come on up so I can get to know who we are. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure I've spoken to some of you by now via email, via phone, via something probably. So welcome, good morning, relax, because I know it's a lot of stuff you feel like you have to do to get ready to start Rutgers. Just, we're excited to have you and we're here for you. I want you to know that first and foremost. So if you have a question, if you feel stuck anywhere in the process, before I even start, I want to let you know. Reach out to us, let us know. Let us know where you're having trouble, let us know where you're having difficulty, tell your counselor. Um, make sure that we know that you can't move forward so we can assist you, okay? Um, so I, I like to be very upbeat. I'm not about to be boring while I talk about some paperwork, okay? <laughs> so I want to let you guys know, if you already have um, taken a look into your My Ruckers portal in the financial section, then you already noticed that we're requesting documents to make sure that we can give you your financial acceptance for EOF, okay? Um, those documents can go anywhere from the tax return transcripts, um, proof of non-filing from the IRS. Um, we will request an asset verification worksheet from you. We may have requested proof of Social Security via your Social Security 1099. Um, I'm just thinking of documents we would ask for. We will ask you to verify your household size, how many students in college in your family. Um, we may have asked you to verify if you did not work or your parents did not work rather, what sources of income you used to survive for the year of 2020. Okay, if you're stuck on anything before we leave today, please grab me, let me know that you're stuck somewhere so that we can assist you while we have you here and while you have us. I just wanna introduce real briefly the other senior financial aid advisor that works with EOF with me, Ms. Jeanette Diaz. So, <laughs> all right, she'll be doing, um, giving some um, information to answer some questions for those of you that speak Spanish and prefer to get the information that way after this. So you'll get to meet her then, okay? And then she'll be here with me if there are any questions um, or concerns that you have, all right? So I guess I wanna talk to you guys a little bit about making sure that you've gone through your My Ruckers portal. The goal is that for any sections that are red, telling you there's something to do, we wanna turn those sections green. We wanna make sure that we've submitted all the documents and once you submit documents, don't just say, okay, I did it, I'm never gonna look back at my portal. You wanna go, you wanna look, you wanna make sure that um, now the section is complete, you wanna make sure we didn't kick any documents back telling you they were unacceptable. Um, you wanna make sure that there's no comments where we, no we notified you that you're missing information. You wanna make sure you don't just do it once and never look back, okay? Um, it, we usually give pretty detailed comments to tell you what to do next. And I'm so happy that most of the time the comments are read, you guys follow the directions, you resubmit the documents or you submit the correct documents and we're able to move forward. So I'm really happy um, about the return on that and how you guys are receiving the information that we give back. All right, so also when you're inside of your portal, it's gonna be asking everybody that filed the tax return for the IRS tax return transcript. I know a lot of people are hung up trying to make sure they pull that from the IRS website. Please note that if you cannot pull that from the IRS website, you can request it by mail, and that's the information that they give you on the site. However, since time is getting to be of the essence, I want you guys to make sure that you know you can call the IRS directly. It's 1-800-TAX-1040. Um, you can you know, Google that phone number. If you call them, they can fax it to you. I noticed that some people have been having it faxed to the institution via our fax number. 
But remember that these are parent tax, inform parent tax informations, I'm sorry. And I want you guys to understand that it does not have any information for your student on it. It may contain a last four digits of a social or something like that, but it's not enough information for us to determine who do these transcripts belong to. So the best thing is that if you're gonna request them be faxed, that you have them faxed to you at a phone number or, or fax number um, that you're able to access at the moment. I've had people that have gone to a FedEx or a UPS store and requested it there. They could tell them I'm in front of the fax machine right now. Um, if there's another friend or if you can get it faxed to you at work, those are the best things to do because we cannot determine who the documents belong to if they're faxed to us, um, to our fax number. And I want you guys to just understand that. Also, with the non-tax file form for our dependent students, it is a requirement that you do submit a request to the IRS for proof that you did not file a tax return in the year 2020. I know we get a lot of questions on that. Oh, I can't get it on the website. If you cannot get it on the website, you do have to request it by mail, all right? Or you can fax over the form um, 4506T. I'm sorry, I went blank. Um, we can give you more information on that if you have questions about getting that document. But the IRS form 4506T allows you to request any document from the IRS that you would need, all right? You would check that you need your non-filer form, and then you would fax it over to them, all right? If in two weeks they still haven't sent you anything back, all you have to do is give our office a copy of the 4506T form. Listen, I faxed it on this day or I mailed it on this day, and it's been two weeks and I haven't gotten anything back. As long as you completed that form out correctly when you sent it to the IRS, then we can go ahead and accept that and just a statement from you that explains whether or not you worked or filed in the year 2020. So before I just move from that area, did anybody get hung up there? Is there a question anybody has about the non-filing statement? Because I feel like that question comes to our office a lot. Okay, awesome. If it comes up later, I'm going to be here longer to answer questions for you. Um, I, that means the counselors are doing a great job of getting information from our office and making sure it's disseminated to you all. So I'm happy to meet you. I'm happy to be here. Um, Jeanette, can you think of anything else that we want to make sure we let them know of? I just don't want to leave anything out. Okay. So once you look into your financial section of your portal, again, the goal is that you want all of the sections to be what color? Okay, what color? All right, what color? Oh, okay, I'm just checking, making sure you got me. Okay, so if anything's saying red or incomplete, um, then you gotta know you got some work to do in there, all right? And remember, contact us if you get stuck anywhere so that we can help you, all right? So the goal is that all those sections are green. Um, there's a section on accepting your federal student loans. I'm just gonna caution you, do not decline your loans until you receive your term bill in July and you can be sure that you do not need your loans. Because a lot of times people say, oh, I know I don't wanna take my loans and they decline them early. And then we have this mad rush of hundreds of people saying, please reinstate my loans, please reinstate my loans, please reinstate my loans, when they realize that they're needed. So I would caution you to go ahead and accept your student loans, do everything you have to do to get your loans so you can see your full package of aid being offered to you because you can easily lower your loan or completely cancel them out once you receive your term bill and you can see what you actually need to pay your bill. Does that make sense? Okay. All right then, well I'll be here, it's wonderful to meet you. And what color are we looking for our sections to be on the financial aid portal? Okay, I just wanted to make sure. You guys have a great rest of the day, all right? <laughs>Hey, we're moving right along. Um, all right, it's my turn. I get to talk to you about all the fun stuff, right? Mm hmm Let me see if I can move this up. Can you help me? That's wonderful. Thank God for IT and Student Center staff. Everyone's here. I'm here to talk to you about our Summer Institute experience as a whole, right? I know you're all excited about taking classes, but let me tell you about the whole experience and what it looks like. So first of all, there is a Summer Institute residence hall experience. Um, it is Hardenberg Hall, that lovely image right there. Um, we will provide you uh, instructions on how to get there, and all this information is going to come to you via email as well. But what I'm gonna be covering are components of the housing and a typical day in the life of one of our students. Well, it starts at eight o'clock in the morning. Go, I, oh my God, did I hear somebody Rumble? No. We're up early in the morning, people. Classes starts promptly at 8 a.m. 
So you have to think about that for your students and for you guys listening. Your first class is either going to be math or English. And then once that class is over, there's a small about 20 minute or so gap. And then at 1030, you start an English or a math. It depends, right? It's like block scheduling. And then everyone goes to lunch together. We're very community based. We do things in groups. We're a community and we're happy to be an EOF family. We call ourselves a family, so we all go eat together. Lunch is at a specific time for all of us, and when lunch is over, you get to go back to the residence hall, not to hang out, just to drop off your books, because then you're going to your next class, which starts at 1.30 in the afternoon. And it'll go about 3.30, 4 o'clock. So you'll be in classes all day. Then you get out of class, get back to the residence hall, and guess where we're going together as a community? Oh, I'm sorry, say it again? Dinner, yes, we're all going to dinner together, and it's so exciting and so good. So once dinner is over, the day doesn't end for you because we believe we want to help you and provide you as many resources as possible. So you get tutoring. You get math and you get English tutoring in the evenings, with your tutor that will be part of your class experience. So again, we're combining the whole experience for a whole day with you. So you'll either be in a math tutoring or an English tutoring, depending on your schedule. And then on Wednesday nights is our fun night, as we say, because you know, you're gonna be having long academic days. So what does it look like? The residence hall is comprised of a hall director, two assistant hall directors. Those are all professional staff. So these are people who have residence life experience for a long time, and the resident mentors that we hire, the 14 of them, are students just like you who applied, had an interview process, two interview processes actually, their GPAs, their transcript, everything was looked at and they were hired. And most of them are EOF students who wanted to give back to the program. So believe it or not, even though they were part of the summer experience in their summer, they wanted to come back and do it again and meet new students. So we're gonna have 14 of those. A caseload of you will be assigned to each of those students and they'll be your mentor, their, your guide to help you get ready as you transition into the fall semester. Now, what do we do in housing? Well, we manage the whole housing experience for all of you. We help you understand what it means to be an EOF scholar. We don't take that word lightly. You're gonna start putting that in your signature in your email. We want you to be addressed as a scholar. We will address you as a scholar. And we expect that you act like a scholar. We provide social educational programming. So we are gonna very, we're very competitive. We're gonna have EOF Olympics. We're gonna compete by floor and resident mentors. There are prizes, we're gonna have a barbecue, we're gonna have a talent show. So are, there are things to do on Wednesdays to decompress and to have fun, and they are social educational type programming. And of course, it's really important that we provide mentorship and fellowship. We want you to walk out of the summer experience ready and prideful to be an EOF student. And we're gonna continue that theme throughout your first year experience course that happens in the afternoons. Now here's the rules and regs, and this is not all of them. This is all I can fit on one page. And the first one is all encompassing. As a university, we follow a lot of policies and protocols. And in Residence Life for SAS EOF, we follow all the university's residence hall policies that are located on the residence hall website that you can look up. But we enhance them one step further. While during the academic year, you can have guests in the residence hall for the purposes of summer, no guest, right? not allowed to have people visit. Who has time for visitors? You're gonna be in classes and all that stuff all day. There is going to be other rules that are in place that the resident mentor will go through with you during your first floor, me your first floor meeting, excuse me, during your first night of move-in. And that's a meeting that's gonna be covered all things, when quiet hours are, when lights out are, did you hear me, lights out? Yes, that exists, because you're gonna get up early in the morning anyway, so you can't stay up late at night. So we have rules in place to help you. We're here as a resource, and we wanna see you succeed. Move in and move out. Move in will be July 10th. I will be sending an email to all of you. It is very important that you check that email. In the coming weeks, it will come to you, and it'll be very detailed. It'll tell you who your roommate is, 
what floor you've been assigned and what time you're moving in. We are taking COVID protocols and our safety very, very seriously. We understand that this is our first time back in two years in an in-person experience. And so with university's protocols and policies, we are getting ready to move in over 200 students at the moment. So that's kind of a big deal for us. We take over the entire residence hall. It is six floors. And I'm going to do my best um, to make sure that there is adequate space for everyone. Just so you know, it is a communal residence hall. It is a first year residence hall, which means that there is communal bathrooms. On our website, you can go to the Summer Institute packet. We have a what to bring section. So you're not overpacking and you're not underpacking. So you know exactly what you need to buy or shop for, what you already have and just need to add to. When you move in, we will provide some water and some light refreshments. Housing will join us to give you your key. If you lose it, the whole lock has to be replaced. That is the charge you incur. So we give you a lanyard and everything you need to keep your key safe. For move out, same concept. Move out will be July 29th. We will do it all over again, but this time you'll be waving goodbye instead of waving hello. We do ask that you go home every Friday. In the email I'll be providing you, there's going to be information about what weekly check-in and check-out looks like. Every Friday, everyone has to go home, including the Res Life team, because guess what? Campus closes. Our college app campus will close. There is nothing open during the summer, not the student center, nothing. So all of our students check out Friday afternoons after their last class. Check out is until 6 in the evening, and that's it. So you have to start thinking about these things, about how you're being picked up, if you're taking transportation, what that looks like for you, and get yourself prepared from now. Check-in will be on Sunday evenings at 9 o'clock. Not Mrs. Lee, I'm coming at 10 because we're having a barbecue. Not Mrs. Lee, I'm coming at 3 because I don't have a ride after that. You're going to have to figure that out now because nobody's in the residence hall at 3. And everyone is doing meetings at 10. So it's very important that you know that. And in the email I'm going to send you is everything you need to know about that experience. Summer forms and room assignments. Like I said, you'll get an email. I'll be assigning your roommate. I love all the emails asking me if you can room with a friend. You cannot. We want this experience to be new for you. So we're going to put you with students. We're, not, we're going to do our room assignments ourselves. On the website is a Summer Institute packet. There's forms that you've been filling out. We've been checking on the back end of everything. Your counselors have access to those forms. So occasionally they'll say, hey, I didn't see this form yet. If you're like, I sent it in, we can check. We can look for you. Not a problem. So that's really something important that you need to know. For the purposes of our summer, if you are under the age of 18 up until July 9th, you're considered a minor for us. So you have to complete what's called a minor um, form for departure, meaning your parent has to get it notarized. Myself, Ms. James, and Mr. Enriquez, who's doing the live chat as we speak with our live streamers watching, who's answering that, are the three notaries on staff. Today, this afternoon, if you have that form, after your counseling session, breakout session, we're ha happy to notarize that for you. If you sent it by mail, I actually have those right in front of me. So I can double check for you if you didn't um, get a confirmation that we received it. The forms are important. Housing will not let you come into the residence hall if forms are not completed. Uploading your vaccine card is extremely important. If you've gotten vaccinated, you need to upload the actual images of the vaccine card. If the university's protocol is that no one is allowed into the residence hall without that, we follow that protocol, which means that you cannot be part of this experience. And the last thing we want to do is sit somebody down and have that conversation because of that. This is a great opportunity. The middle word of EOF is the most important one, an opportunity, and I don't want it to pass you by. Parking, so many emails I've gotten about students wanting to know, well, can I bring my car on campus? That's the way I have to get home. Sure, but that is a parking summer fee that you incur. 
through um, parking services, the Rutgers parking services, they'll tell you the cost. It's generally under $100, but don't quote me on that. But you would register your car. I would tell you specifically where you have to park it. And because you're not using it all week, the car doesn't move from the parking spot that you put it in. So you have to be mindful of that. So it's not like you're going to be driving it around. I'm going to be very honest with you. This is the best experience of your life. The beginning, you're really going to hate it. And you're going to be so mad. You have so much to do. And then in the end, you're going to be like, I don't want to leave. I guarantee it. Okay? I promise you that that's exactly what's going to happen because I've seen it year after year after year. Finally, the other thing I want to say is we have staff here who works very hard to support you. I do want to introduce the counselors for a moment because it's important that we recognize them. And of course, Mrs. Lee today does not have her glasses on. So if counselors, if you're in the back of the room, if you wouldn't mind joining me in the front, I would really appreciate that. Thank you so much. I'm going to give you a mic. And I just want you to introduce yourselves by name. So everyone knows who you are. Those in the live stream watching know who you are. This is a great opportunity to get to know you. So, good morning, everyone. My name is Amy Diamond Rodriguez, and I'm a senior counselor. I'm located at Lucy Stone Hall on Livingston campus. Good morning, everyone. My name is Melissa Henry, senior counselor on the College Avenue site. Good morning, everyone. My name is Zena Jubilee, EOF manager, and I'm on the College Avenue site. Good morning. My name is Tevin King, senior counselor at the College Avenue site. Good morning, everyone. My name is Sherelle Smith. I am senior counselor on the College Avenue campus. Hello, Emily Pereira, uh, senior counselor, College Avenue campus. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Christine Anderson, senior counselor. I'm on the Livingston campus, but in the summer, I will be on College Avenue. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Alicia Torres. I'm on the Livingston ca um, campus, so I'm a senior counselor over there. Good morning. Miguel Rodriguez, senior counselor on the College Ave site. Hey, y'all. Clifford D. Frazier III. I'm a senior counselor on the Livingston campus. Welcome. Good morning, everyone. My name is Lisa Herrera. I'm a counselor on the Livingston site. Good morning. I'm Shauna Berkeley, an UF manager on the Livingston campus site. I think that's everyone. Um, Mrs. Colom is not here today, but you'll be still be able to connect with her through the live stream, and those students who have her today will still be able to go to her room for her presentation. So this is our staff that has been connecting with you since the beginning. Again, like the other gentleman said, if you don't know who your counselor is, no problem. We can look it up right now. We can connect you to your counselor. Parents, your student today, as part of the day, will have an opportunity during the breakout session to meet exclusively with their counselor. And while they're having those conversation, you'll be having a conversation with our leadership team who we'll introduce at the end of this before we break out. So it's really important that you know that they have a resource the entire time they're here at Rucker. So thank you so much to the team. I know you don't like being at the front, <laughs> so I'll have you go back. Um, and so again, we're very fortunate. We're creating an experience for our students. Um, I do want you to know that we will take questions at the very end when we do wrap up, but now we have another guest speaker and we're very lucky. We have so many campus partners who want to help EOF all the time. And we're very fortunate that we make these connections and our students make these connections very early on for a reason. And so I want to have the person come on up. I'm going to introduce Ms. Victoria Miller Butcher. She works for our counseling services. Ms. Butcher, Ms. Miller Butcher, apologies. Please come on up. Give her a round of applause. Good morning, everyone. My name is Victoria Miller Butcher. I use she, her pronouns, and I am a community-based counselor for CAPS, which is our mental health support service here on campus. So our team consists of psychologists, psychologists, counselors, social workers, um, who all provide individual counseling, group counseling, workshops, and presentations throughout the school year. Um, the groups that are offered vary each semester depending on the needs of the students. We offer groups for anxiety, overcoming depression, uh, interpersonal um, groups. We also offer groups for students with sexual or gender identity concerns, as well as a black affinity group and Bienvenidos, which is a space for our Latinx students. 
Um, I, as I said, I am a community-based counselor. I am embedded at the Paul Robeson Cultural Center, and within the next few weeks, I will be joining the EOF family. So I am very excited to work with you all during the Summer Institute, coming to the fun nights, and hopefully see you all at lunch. Um, we will be providing a service called Let's Talk, which is available throughout the school year, not just during the summer, which is a 30-minute drop-in consultation service. If you are unsure if counseling is for you, if you don't necessarily want to commit to ongoing counseling services, or if there's a, a specific situation that you want to talk through, difficulty with a roommate, um, feel free to drop in, or you can call CAPS to make an appointment. CAPS offers a variety of services. ADAP, which is our alcohol and other drug assistance program. Um, we also have a recovery house on campus. It is a residence hall meant for students who are struggling uh, with substance use for them to have a space to focus on their uh, recovery and still maintain their academics. We also have a next step program, which is for students who may need a higher level of care or support in the event that they are hospitalized for mental health concerns and need help transitioning back on campus. They are offered individual and group counseling on almost a daily basis. We have crisis counselors on call Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 4.30, and if there is assistance needed outside of those hours, then there is somebody available who will be able to provide support. So I am very excited to meet you all, um, and I am looking forward to speaking with you, working with you, having fun with you, um, and I hope that you enjoy your experience here at Rutgers. Does anyone have any questions? No? Okay. <laughs> Okay, so a couple of things. We introduced the counseling staff, but I do want to introduce some other key players who you've probably been communicating with as well, um, and that is our support team. Um, they're the people who answer our phones, who are following up with you, who've been helping us mail you stuff. So I do want them to grab the mic and just introduce your name. Come on down. Don't be shy. Sure. Good morning, everyone. My name is Ryan Sordis, and I'm the administrative assistant at our Livingston campus site. Nice to, to meet you all this morning. Good morning, everyone. My name is Diane Marte, and I'm the administrative assistant on College Avenue. Welcome. Good morning, everyone. My name is Patricia Paniagua. I'm the department administrator supervisor. Welcome. Hi. And we have just a few more people who are part of our leadership team that didn't get a chance to introduce themselves yet. I'm going to call Ms. James up. Dean Brooks, come on up so that you can introduce yourself as well. Here you go, Ms. James. Good morning, everyone. My name is Linnell James. I'm the Senior Program Coordinator for Financial Aid Outreach and Recruitment. Just a little bit about what I do. So my main goal is to help you through the financial aid process with, along with your counselors actually manage the state grant for the EOF program. So a lot of the documents that your counselors are helping you uh, complete is to help me make sure you all get your funds. So please make sure you're responding to them as quickly as possible. I also handle a lot of our recruitment outreach efforts. So I may have met you in some of the past um, high school visits. So if you have, please remind me um, because I've been to a lot of places and it'll be great to reconnect with you. Um, but it's a pleasure to meet you and your parents today. Hello everyone, I am Vicki Brooks, Assistant Dean for Administration. I've been here forever. I've gone through all of these summer institutes. Um, I do not have a caseload of first year students, but I will get to know all of you by name and most of you in person over the course of the summer and over the course of the first year. Welcome. Thank Oh, thank you so much, Dean Brooks. Okay, so just a couple more things that I have to share with you um, and then give you an opportunity as a whole group before we do breakouts to talk amongst ourselves and ask any questions. I will tell you it is very important to ask questions because you want to get all the information right up front so you're aware of what it's going to look like for you. Um, in terms of one of the things that you see is a lot of people are wearing masks. 
It's really important that you get acquainted with the Rutgers COVID protocols and policies. Um, during the summer, one thing that I didn't share or that we didn't even mention, but the academic portion, you will need a mask in class. Those are still required at Rutgers for all classes, not just the EOF program. So in the summertime, when you're attending your classes, you will need to have a mask on in class. That is very important to know because if you weren't planning on bringing any, you should. The portion of not uh, wearing masks or optional masks, if you will, is in the residence hall. You do have an option to wear masks in the residence hall. Um, when you're having a group meeting with the resident mentors, masks will be required to be on because it'll be a smaller space. That is part of the protocol for our student meetings. However, in the building, when you're walking around, you can feel free not to wear a mask if you choose not to. Okay, It is entirely your choice in the residence hall. Very important that if you haven't done so, you upload in, in, uh, your RUID picture, what Dr. Shostak said. And that the only reason for that is because you're getting your IDs before anyone else. You're getting them at move-in, and you will need your ID as your swipe system for the dining hall. So you'll need it for lunch, you'll need it for dinner. So this is important. If you haven't done that, that is not a form that's on our website. That is a form that you, ha you have to upload a picture through your enrollment pathway. So very important if you haven't done so, that you do do that. For the purposes of today, as I've said before, and I'm gonna just remind you, we are gonna do breakout sessions because we want our parents to have a dialogue with our leadership team, and we want the students to gather, gather some information from their counselor. So in a moment when I do do breakouts, you have been assigned to your counselor. This point, again, if you don't know on the way out, Ms. James is here. I am here, I can look it up really quick for you if you don't know who your counselor is. And then there is going to be people outside, there is directional arrows to take you to the rooms that your counselors are assigned to, and you'll be with them. While you're there, if you prefer to hear the presentation, the parent presentation in Spanish, right where you checked in with your vaccine cards, um, there is a the fireside lounge, and that's where um, Mrs. Paniagua and Mr. Enriquez will be and they will be speaking to our parents uh, in Spanish. And for parents that want to stay and hear the presentation in English, we'll be right here as well. So we're, we're, you wouldn't leave this room. Um, so that's important to know. And for those live stream watching, on the live stream, there are images of your counselor. All you have to do is click on the image of your counselor, and it will take you to the room your counselor is in right now and you'll be a part of that meeting experience. For parents watching, same concept. If you click on Dr. Shostak's image on the live stream website, it will take you to the parent speaking room in English, and if you click on Mr. Enriquez's image, it will take you to the Spanish speaking room where Mr. Enriquez is currently. So we are trying to have everyone connected. I will say this. One thing that I'm, I just want everyone to know, it's very important that you check your emails. And if you're a parent that checks the email for the student, I ask that you and your student communicate about that. It's important that everyone is on the same page with the information and that you have accurate information because if we're sending things and maybe one or the other is seeing it, you're missing out on all the information we're giving. Emails are very important to us. Today, we're going to be offering you some lunch, box lunch options. In the back, our wonderful catering, Gerlandas, is setting that up for you. So when we wrap up on the way out, you'll be able to pick up a box lunch. And then you can have it in the meeting room with your counselor. You don't have to eat it in the meeting room. It's okay. You can eat it on the way home. You can eat it at home. Um, there are various options in the back, vegetarian as well, not a problem. I do want to give an opportunity now because I think it is important while the live stream is for a whole general community to ask any questions that you have. It could be any general question. This is the time to do it. I'm going to ask Dean Brooks, since you're closer to the mic, if you wouldn't mind, if somebody has a question to pass the mic. I know there's going to be questions. Who has a question for us? No questions for us? Nobody wants to know about all the great activities we're doing in the summer? Okay, so I, if no one has a question, I'm just going to give a couple more announcements. July 15th is our alumni career conference. Make sure that when you pack, you pack yourself business professional casual, I mean business casual clothing. 
because you'll be meeting and, dis and um, connecting with alumni in a networking event and you need to look professional. And you'll have to bring that during your first day of move-in because you won't have time to go home for the weekend. So you're bringing business casual um, because you will have an alumni networking conference that we host July 15th. That is very important. I want to make sure everyone knows that. Okay. The other thing I do want to mention is please, again, go to the Hardenberg website. You'll see that that residence hall is outfitted with a micro fridge. Do not spend money on refrigerators. Do not spend money on microwaves. You'll be sending them home and it'll be a waste of money. Nobody seemed to ask me what was in the residence hall. I was very surprised. Usually everybody wants to know what that looks like. Is there any questions that are coming up for anyone? Nope. Okay, so what I'm gonna ask you to do, how many of you don't know who your counselor is? Fantastic. This is great start, look at that. If you know who your counselor is, if you, um, on the way out, again, you can grab yourself a box lunch. I know they're still setting up, so just gently and patiently, please do that. Um, grab yourself a box lunch and something to drink. Our staff in the back, um, and I'm looking who they are, Ms. Berkeley, I don't have my glasses on, Ms. Torres. Mr. Rodriguez, yes, am I right? Okay, fantastic. They're gonna help guide you to grab one of these and then you can head out. Parents, if you're looking to hear the presentation in our Spanish speaking session, please grab a box lunch on the way and join us in the Fireside Lounge. And if you plan on hearing it here, please stay in this room and grab yourself um, a box lunch right after everyone has exited. Thank you so much for participating in our orientation. We really appreciate it. Please go to your um, respective rooms right now. Thank you for watching in the live stream. Please go ahead and click on your counselor's information. Have a good day, everyone. I will speak with all of you shortly.